Seth Ryder had always dreamed of going to the stars, but not like this. As he stepped out of the sleek, obsidian-hulled shuttle onto the umbilicus, connecting it to the massive toroidal space station, he couldn't suppress a shudder. Less than a week ago, he'd been just another struggling science fiction writer, pecking away at his latest novel in a cramped New York apartment. Then came the message. It had arrived simultaneously on every screen and speaker on Earth. A sonorous, multi-toned voice that bypassed language and burrowed straight into the brainstem. People of Earth, it had intoned, your presence is required. What followed were coordinates to a location in the Oort cloud and a deadline. Failure to comply would result in the immediate annihilation of the planet. The transmission had concluded with an image of Earth, slowly rotating against the backdrop of space. Then with a flash, it had vanished, replaced by a gaping, yawning void. Pandemonium had ensued. Stock markets crashed, riots erupted, and world leaders engaged in frantic, hushed consultations. In the end, it was decided that a multinational delegation would be sent, consisting of some of Earth's greatest minds, scientists, diplomats, artists, and philosophers, tasked with making a case for humanity's right to exist. And somehow, in a twist of cosmic bureaucracy, Seth had found himself drafted into this eclectic cadre. Apparently, some harried UN functionary had confused him with Dr. Seth Rader, the noted physicist. By the time the error was discovered, it was too late. The shuttle was prepped, and backing out would be seen as a grave insult to whatever alien entities awaited them. So here he was, a lone sci-fi scribe among luminaries, trying to ignore the cold knot of dread in his gut as he was herded along with the rest of the delegation through the cavernous, curving halls of the station. The architecture was at once alien and unsettlingly familiar, all soaring arches and fractal filigrees that seemed to twist at the edge of perception. After an interminable march, they arrived at a vast amphitheater-like space dominated by a semicircular table on a raised dais. Arrayed behind it was a panoply of extraterrestrial beings, each more bizarre than the last. Chitinous insectoids, amorphous blobs, crystalline entities that refracted the light in dazzling spectra. In front of the table, a pulsing blue orb hovered in midair, casting an eerie glow. As the delegation filed into the space, a guard consisting of hulking, reptilian bipeds took up positions around the perimeter. They were armed with wicked-looking staves that crackled with barely suppressed energy. Step forward, boomed a voice from the central insectoid figure. Seth immediately christened Squicky in his head. The Oort Council will now hear your pleas. Know that your world's fate hangs in the balance. One by one, humanity's advocates approached the glowing orb to make their case. The physicist spoke of the wondrous complexity of the human brain. The musician played a hauntingly beautiful Bach cello suite. The philosopher waxed lyrical on the nature of sentience and the sanctity of sapient life. Each petitioner was met with the same response. A curt dismissal from Squicky as the blue orb turned a forbidding yellow. Inadequate. Next supplicant. As the line dwindled, Seth felt his mouth go dry. What could he, a humble wordsmith, possibly say to sway this conclave? He wrote about futures both bright and bleak, but always with the comforting knowledge that they were merely fictions. Now the future of his entire species rested on his ability to spin a compelling narrative, and he had no idea where to start. Lost in his own spiraling thoughts, Seth barely registered when his turn arrived. It was only the sharp jab of a guard's energy stave that jolted him back to the present. Rubbing his stinging side, he stumbled forward, acutely aware of every alien eye upon him. He cleared his throat, trying to project a confidence he in no way felt. Uh, hi there. I'm Seth. Seth Ryder. I'm a writer. Science fiction, mostly. Stories about... about aliens and spaceships and... and... He trailed off as Squicky leaned forward compound eyes glittering with impatience. The orb flickered an ominous red. In that moment, something inside Seth snapped, a lifetime's worth of pent-up frustration and insecurity, transmuting in an instant to incandescent rage. How dare these self-appointed arbiters of cosmic justice sit in judgment over his species? How dare they demand that humanity prostrate itself for the right to merely exist? Narrowing his eyes, Seth abandoned the podium and strode to the edge of the dais, ignoring the warning hum of the guard's staves. He looked each council member dead in the eye, or ocular cluster. 
his gaze finally coming to rest on Squicky. You know what? I've changed my mind. I'm not going to beg for our lives or try to impress you with our achievements. Because that's not why you really brought us here, is it? The orb strobed wildly, cycling through hues for which Seth had no name. The council members shifted uneasily, a suzerous of agitation rippling through their ranks. No, Seth continued, his voice low and steady. The reason you're so keen to wipe us out is because you're scared. Scared of what we might become. Scared of the threat we pose to your cozy little galactic hegemony. He began to pace along the dais, never breaking eye contact with Squicky. You see, you made a mistake. You thought you could just pluck humans from their homeworld with impunity. Study us, exploit us, maybe keep a few as pets or curiosities. But you failed to do your homework. Failed to grasp the most fundamental truth about the human species. Seth paused, relishing the anticipatory silence. Even the orb seemed to pulse in time with his words. We don't take kindly to being fucked with. Gasps and chitters of shock echoed through that chamber. Squicky half rose from his seat, mandibles quivering with outrage. But Seth plowed on, heedless. Even now, scattered bands of abductees are learning your technologies, turning them against you. Sowing chaos throughout your precious star-spanning empires. You thought you could put the genie back in the bottle by culling us at the source. But it's too late. The human spirit is already loose in the cosmos, and it will not be contained. He spread his arms wide, encompassing the entire council in his gaze. So go ahead. Destroy Earth. Reduce it to a cinder orbiting a dying sun. But know this, our vengeance will be terrible and swift. We will become a cancer in the blood of your civilization, spreading inexorably from world to world until the very stars tremble at our passing. Seth stepped back, breathing hard. The orb was a veritable maelstrom of color, flickering and flashing like a demented kaleidoscope. Several council members appeared to be in states of apoplexy, their attendants fluttering about them in distress. Only Squicky remained relatively composed, though Seth fancied he could detect a glimmer of fear deep within the alien's unreadable eyes. After a moment that seemed to stretch into eternity, the insectoid raised a cutinous appendage. The chamber fell silent. It seems, he said slowly, that we have misjudged the nature of your species. Your passion, your indomitable will. These are not qualities that can be quantified or contained. They must be respected. Behind him, the council broke into a chorus of astonished exclamations. Squicky silenced them with an abrupt gesture. The Oort Council hereby rescinds its judgment against Earth, he declared. Humanity shall be granted protectorate status and aid in recovering its lost children. He fixed Seth with a piercing stare. But mark this well, Seth Rider of Earth. Should your kind prove unworthy of this forbearance, if you allow your baser instincts to drive you to destruction and ruin, there will be consequences. Dire consequences. Seth inclined his head, fighting to keep the exultant grin off his face. Understood. I'll be sure to include that in the press release. With a final warning look, he tossed the disruptor to the floor at Squicky's feet. A pleasure doing business with you. I look forward to many productive years of cooperation between our peoples. And to my fellow Terrans scattered to the stars, hang tight, we're coming for you. The council chamber erupted into chaos. The once imperious aliens reduced to a cacophony of shouts, wails, and recriminations. Seth paid them no heed. He merely turned on his heel and strode out, not a backward glance. As he strode out of the council chamber, head high, Seth couldn't quite suppress a giddy laugh. A science fiction writer brokering an interstellar peace accord, ensuring the survival of the human race. He had a story to write. Wait until he told his agent about this. Talk about one hell of a story pitch. But the solemnity of the moment quickly reasserted itself. The battle was far from over. Humanity had earned a reprieve, not a true victory. But it was a start. After all, Seth mused, the universe had just learned a valuable lesson. Never ever fuck with the people of Earth. We bite back. The shuttle ride back to Earth was a blur for Seth. He spent most of it staring out the viewport, watching the stars wheel by and trying to process the enormity of what had just transpired. He, Seth Ryder, had single-handedly averted the annihilation of the human race. With nothing more than a few impassioned words, 
He had cowed the galaxy's self-appointed master race into submission. He couldn't shake the feeling that he would wake up at any moment back in his cramped New York apartment, just another struggling writer with a head full of wild imaginings. The events of the past few hours replaying in his mind like a fever dream. It was the kind of tale he would have once dismissed as too implausible for even the most outlandish space opera. Yet here he was, living it. The sheer cosmic absurdity of the situation kept threatening to overwhelm him, bubbling up in hysterical giggles that he had to choke back lest he alarm his fellow delegates. He couldn't help but note, as were the awed and apprehensive looks his fellow delegates kept shooting him, news of his confrontation with the Oort Council had spread like wildfire through the shuttle's cramped confines, and now the very air seemed to crackle with a newfound respect for the unassuming sci-fi author in their midst. Seth shifted uncomfortably under their scrutiny, suddenly longing for the blessed anonymity of his former life. He had never sought the limelight, content to spin his tales from the quiet of his own imagination. But now, through a twist of fate and bureaucratic misadventure, he found himself thrust onto the galactic stage, the unwitting spokesperson for his entire species. It was a role he was ill-prepared for, and yet, in that moment before the Council, something had awakened within him a fierce, protective love for his flawed but beautiful race, a bone-deep conviction that humanity deserved a place among the stars, not as vassals or victims, but as equals. As Earth swelled in the viewport, a blue-green jewel against the infinite black, Seth felt a swell of emotion. This was what he had fought for, what he had risked everything to preserve, this fragile, precious world and all the messy, complicated, wonderful beings who called it home. The shuttle touched down to a hero's welcome. Cheering crowds, ticker tape parades, the full pomp and circumstance of a grateful planet. Seth found himself swept up in a whirlwind of interviews, photo ops, and state dinners. His face plastered across every screen and his words dissected by armies of pundits and talking heads. Through it all, he clung to his privacy as best he could, deflecting the more intrusive questions with a smile and a quip. He knew the public was hungry for details, eager to lionize or demonize him in turn, but he had no interest in playing the part of the conquering hero or the sainted martyr. Seth did his best to avoid the limelight, shunting the credit onto his more deserving colleagues. He had played his part, but he was no statesman or scientist or sage, just a storyteller who had happened to spin the right yarn at the right time. Besides, there was another role that called to him now, one that he knew with a strange certainty was his true purpose in this brave new universe. As the world celebrated, Seth packed a bag, bid a quiet farewell to his old life, and boarded the first interstellar freighter that would take him. His destination? The ragged fleet of cobbled together ships, crewed by desperate abductees turned renegades, that even now harried the fringes of the galactic imperium. He had a promise to keep and a mission to fulfill. They weren't hard to find once he knew where to look. The Oort Council, as part of their grudging capitulation, had shared certain intelligence, the locations of human feral colonies, as they called them, scattered across a dozen systems, fragile, precarious toeholds on hostile worlds, populated by traumatized and enraged Terrans hell-bent on bringing their abductors to heel. When Seth's ship docked at the first of these ragtag outposts, a ramshackle collection of prefab habitats, nestled in the rock and ice of a remote asteroid belt, he wasn't sure what kind of welcome to expect. These were hardened men and women, survivors of unimaginable ordeals, and they had learned to trust no one, least of all some soft-handed wordsmith from a world they now barely recognized. At first, his arrival was met with suspicion and even outright hostility. Hard eyes followed his every move and more than one hand strayed towards a weapon as he walked the narrow, pressurized corridors of the habitat. But as word of his identity spread, as the story of his confrontation with the Council passed from lip to lip, the atmosphere began to change. Wary glances turned to looks of curiosity, then amazement, and finally, a tentative sort of hope. Here was a man who had faced down the galaxy's masters and lived to tell the tale, who had forced the mighty Oort to recognize humanity's right to the stars. For the first time in years, the rebels allowed themselves to dream of something more than mere survival. Around campfires and in cramped spacecraft holds, Seth shared his story, 
Speaking of Earth's 11th hour reprieve and the promise of a new beginning, he painted a picture of a humanity united and ascendant, no longer the victims of a capricious cosmos, but the masters of their own destiny. With each telling, he saw the impact of his words reflected in the faces of his listeners. Backs straightened, jaws unclenched, eyes brightened with a rekindled spark of defiance. These were a people too long without hope, their spirits battered by loss and hardship, but not broken, never broken. And as Seth spoke, as he wove a vision of a better tomorrow, he felt something kindling within himself as well, a sense of purpose, of rightness. This was why he had been spared, why he had been chosen, not to rest on his laurels or bask in fleeting glory, but to be the voice of the voiceless, the storyteller who would rewrite the human race's fractured narrative and give it a new triumphant ending. Under Seth's quiet guidance, the once scattered bands of rebels began to coalesce, forging bonds of mutual aid and shared purpose. They reached out to other human enclaves, trading resources and intelligence, and slowly, steadily, a network began to form, a spider's web stretching across the stars with Seth at its center. He became a fixture of the fleet, a constant presence on every ship and station. He listened to their stories, shared their struggles, celebrated their triumphs. And all the while he wrote, capturing the saga of humanity's rebirth in all its gritty, glorious detail. His words spread like wildfire through the ragged fleet and then beyond. Soon, every human outpost and colony rang with tales of the writer, the humble Terran who had stared down the galaxy's masters with nothing but the power of his conviction. Seth's name became a rallying cry, a byword for the potential that lay dormant in every human heart. As the movement grew, as more and more ships and settlements rallied to the cause, Seth found himself at the forefront of something greater than he had ever imagined. What had begun as a quest for survival had become a crusade, a revolution, a great awakening of the human soul. Slowly but surely, the balance of power began to shift. The Oort Council, once the unassailable masters of the galaxy, found their influence waning as human ingenuity and tenacity eroded their grip. Desperate to maintain control, they lashed out with increasing brutality, but each atrocity only served to fan the flames of resistance. Through it all, Seth remained the heart and voice of the rebellion. His pen as potent a weapon as any blaster or warship. Even as the movement took on a life of its own, growing beyond any one man's control, his words continued to guide and inspire, a moral compass in a universe where old certainties had crumbled to dust. And so when the final battle came, when the council's mighty fleets were reduced to scattered debris and their towering citadels lay in ruins, it was not to a conquering human armada that the once mighty aliens knelt, but to a humble writer with a dream in his heart and fire in his words. Standing before the assembled ranks of the free human stars, Seth felt the weight of destiny upon him. He looked out at the sea of faces, human and alien alike, all united by a common vision of a better galaxy. And he knew that this was only the beginning. My friends, he said, his voice ringing clear across the vast expanse, Today we stand at the dawn of a new era, an era of freedom, of equality, of boundless possibility, an era where every sentient being, regardless of species or origin, may reach for the stars and grasp their full potential. He paused, letting his words sink in, feeling the swell of emotion from the gathered throng. But let us not forget the lessons of our long struggle. Let us not trade one tyranny for another or allow the temptations of power to lead us astray. For the true measure of our victory will not be in the glory of conquest, but in the peace and prosperity we build together. Seth raised his hand and a hush fell over the crowd. My fellow beings, I stand before you not as a conqueror or a savior, but as a storyteller, a shaper of dreams. And the greatest story of all, the one we have fought and bled and sacrificed to write is just beginning. He smiled then, a smile of pure, unbridled joy, and in that moment, the galaxy itself seemed to hold its breath. Let us go forth from this place and make it a tale worthy of the telling. Let us build a future where every child, human or otherwise, may grow up free and unafraid, their hearts full of hope and their eyes fixed on distant suns. As the crowd erupted in cheers, as tears of relief and exultation flowed freely, Seth closed his eyes and let the moment wash over him. 
For the first time in his life, he felt truly at peace, truly at home. He had found his calling, his reason for being. And though the road ahead would be long and hard, though there, there would be struggles and setbacks and sorrows aplenty, he knew beyond all doubt that it would be a journey worth taking. For he was the writer, the voice of a species, the keeper of the human tale, and that tale was far from over.